In 1973, UC Berkeley was accused for sex discrimination because out of all men applied, 44% got admitted. And out of all women applied, only 35% got admitted. This huge difference in admission percentage between men and women was unlikely to be due to chance. We are in front of a clear women discrimination case. The reputation of the university was in a risk. UC Berkeley conducted an extended investigation trying to figure out the truth. And in 1975, UC Berkeley published a detailed research paper announcing the following. There is totally no women discrimination in UC Berkeley. And here is the evidence. Breaking down the data of the top six departments of the university, we can easily figure out that the admission percentage of women is greater than men in four departments out of six. So definitely there is no women discrimination. Now we are in front of two valid and opposite arguments. The first argument shows that the total admission percentage of men is greater than women, so there is women discrimination. The other argument shows that the admission percentage of women is greater than men in four departments out of six, so there is no women discrimination. Discrimination. No discrimination. Discrimination. No discrimination. Discrimination. No discrimination. No discrimination. discrimination. No discrimination. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Samson's Paradox. Samson's Paradox is a mathematical effect that occurs when the grouped data is telling an opposite story of the ungrouped data. Let's take a closer look to UC Berkeley data, trying to understand the paradox. It's clear that different departments have very different admission rates. For example, Department A has a very high admission rate in comparison to Department F, which has a very low admission rate. Let's focus on these two departments. For Department A, in spite of the high admission rate of this department, we can find that only 2% of all of the women applied to this department, and 10% of all of the men applied here. And for Department F, in spite of the low admission rate of this department, we can find that 8% of all of the women applied to this department and only 4% of all of the men applied here. Now we can understand that there is no discrimination against women, but all of this confusion happened because women had a high tendency to apply to low admission rate departments. Unlike men that had a high tendency to apply to high admission rate departments. All the parties of the case were trying to find a relation between the applicant gender as the independent variable and the admission decision as the dependent variable. And all of us were unaware of the presence of a third hidden factor in between, which is the department. There is no direct relation between the applicant gender and the admission decision, but this relation is indirect through the department. Department in statistics acts as a mediator variable. It's a variable that is caused by the independent variable and affects the dependent variable. Let's take another use case to understand the paradox more. A medical experiment was comparing the success rates of two treatments for kidney stones. The experiment divided the patients into two equal groups, each of 350 patients. It was found that the overall success rate of treatment A was 78%, and the overall success rate of treatment B was 83%. The experiment result was that treatment B is better than treatment A, as it had a higher overall success rate. But wait a second. Dividing the same data set by the size of the kidney stone reversed the whole situation. We found that treatment A was actually better for both of the small and large kidney stones. The group data voted for treatment B, and the ungrouped data voted for treatment A. Samson's paradox at play again. By looking carefully to the data, we can smell something fishy. Most of the large stones patients were directed to treatment A, and most of the small stones patients 
were directed to treatment B. And as large stone cases are much more severe than small stone cases, the overall result was skewed in favor to treatment B, which was mainly tested on non-severe cases. Telling that the recovery is only dependent on the treatment is totally unfair because this ignores the stone size variable in between. Depending on the stone size, the patient will be directed either to treatment A or treatment B. And depending on the stone size, the severity of the case is determined and of course this impacts the recovery. The stone size is a co-founding variable. It's a variable that is impacting both the dependent and the independent variables. How to resolve the paradox? Thinking causally is always the key. Go and get enough information about how is your data generated? What is the story behind your data? What are the hidden unmeasured variables that are impacting the supposed cause and the supposed effect of your experiment? Only then you will be able to get a fair version of the story. And only then you will be able to decide whether to aggregate the data or to segregate it into groups. For more information about Samson's paradox, check out the links in the description below the video.